Hello again, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario, based out of the Niagara region. Thanks once again for tuning in and watching. I just want to let you know I did create a Twitter account closely linked to this channel. So here's my Twitter handle. It's John Flynn RE Stats, and you can see it on the screen here. Just a quick story before I start into some news articles and some stats for this week. I just recently listed a house on the weekend. There was a bunch of showings. It was a lower priced home. So there was a lot of activity on it. And 50% of the showings were from out of town. So I bring this up because what I see is usually when the market activity increases, you get a lot more out of town agents coming in because inventory is lacking where they're, they're from. Usually GTA in this area they come from to, to the outlying areas like Niagara. And uh, yeah, they bring their buyers to try to get some better deals for them. So yeah, it was interesting, you know, half the showings or half the showing requests are from out of town agents right now. The first article or report I should say I want to talk about is the Terranet National Bank House Price Index, and they are reporting an annual price decline in March, which is odd because most people you'd speak to would say house prices have gone up in March, including myself, uh, regardless of what some viewers think, but we'll get to that later in the video. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not crazy about house price indexes or any of these indexes because they're kind of a lagging indicator, but let's see what they have to say. And maybe there's some interesting info in it. Even though the resale market is showing its first signs of stabilization and the non-seasonally adjusted Terranet National Bank Index has seen its first monthly increase in 10 months, it is still too early to say that the real estate market in Canada is on the rise. In fact, once adjusted for seasonal effects, the composite index contracted by 0.8% during the month, as price growth is generally stronger in the spring with the start of the high season. It should also be noted that on an annual basis, the index in March fell by 6.9% compared to March 2022, and thus equaled the record contraction recorded during the 2008-2009 financial crisis. So wow, we've had the same contraction that we had back in 08, 09. Now, given that wasn't a very big correction for Canada, but it's still interesting to hear. With the Bank of Canada expected to keep its policy rate in restrictive territory for much of 2023 and mortgage rates remaining high, we believe that impact on property prices should continue to be felt in the coming months. All in all, we anticipate that the house price correction that currently stands at 8.8% could continue through the end of 2023, minus another additional 5%. But this assumes that policy rate hikes are over and declines begin at the end of the year. So unlike our friends over at Royal LePage who are now calling for price increases throughout the end of 2023, National Bank is now calling for price declines of up to 5%. And that's with the rates staying where they are. Who knows what would happen if rates do happen to go up, let's say. So this chart just shows the month over month inc increases or decreases in the HPI. And you can see the latest month, March, was 0.8%. And it's been, what, nine months in a row of declines. This next chart is a super interesting one. Take a good look at it here. I'm going to explain it briefly. So the bottom numbers there, uh, you know, 76, 78, 80%, all that stuff, those are the percent increases from February to the peak. So you can see places like Peterborough, Guelph, Oshawa, Barrie, London, they all had the biggest increases throughout the pandemic because the biggest losses are the right-hand column there, and they're down, what, 16 to 22, 23%. So again, on the bottom right, those are the biggest winners and, of course, the biggest losers. And then you get up to the top left, where you have Edmonton, Calgary, Lethbridge, Quebec. Little to gain, little to lose throughout the pandemic and after. So moving on now to one of the articles from last week that you may have already read or heard about on another channel, but it's the slowing in home building in Canada. Now I've highlighted just a few of the major points. And one thing that I took away that was uh, just kind of shows how out to lunch these people are writing these articles or these economists or whoever made the statement, but uh, let's go through it and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. High interest rates are slowing home building, but the worst is yet to come. Data released Wednesday from CMHC alongside its housing supply report shows annualized starts were down 11.2% month over month in March. Across the first quarter of this year, total starts were at their lowest level since the early pandemic in 2020, according to BMO senior economist Robert Kavchik. So I keep seeing this guy's name pop up everywhere. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right by now. While Canada's housing market and home prices are showing signs of stabilizing after a correction tied to higher interest rates, CMHC says the slowdown in construction is nowhere near complete. 
Some projects may become unviable at current financing rates or construction financing will become harder to obtain, the report said. The full impact of interest rate increases hasn't yet been observed in our housing starts data or in the resale housing market or the general economy or anywhere else for that matter. It's coming as governments at all levels of the country are attempting to ramp up home building in an effort to accommodate rising immigration levels and keep homes affordable for those struggling to enter the housing market. So these people truly believe that they're trying to keep homes affordable from the statement, right? And keep homes affordable for those struggling to enter the housing market. They're not, they're not affordable, so I don't know what they're talking about, keeping them affordable. They need to make them affordable. The federal government, for instance, pitched a plan to double the current pace of home building over the next 10 years in its 2022 budget. So far, their plan is failing and there's less homes being built than before they announced the plan. So I, I don't know how they're going to make this happen, but uh, we'll see where it ends. So I just want to clarify a statement or my title from a few videos ago where I said prices are shifting lower. Most people obviously watched the video, saw what I was talking about, but some people I don't think actually watched the video and just read the title and were like, you said prices were going lower and they went up in March. And that wasn't what I meant. It was price points are shifting lower. But anyway, for those of you that watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those of you that didn't, watch it and i've redone the chart to kind of visualize it even better than i had before and uh, it's worth watching again here so this chart compares all the sales in the different price ranges from march 2022 to march 2023 of course the red is last year and the blue is this year and what i said was you can see that the highest price point actually was a million to 1.25 million last year or the most sales i should say in that price point and now this year, our biggest selling price point is six to 700,000. And if you look, actually, I could probably draw a circle around where they've shifted. And you can see they've shifted from, you know, 500 to 700,000 this year. And last March, they were 700 to 1.25 million for the most part. So we've had significant shifts in price points. And uh, so you can say that, yes, prices went up in March. And uh, obviously, if you seasonally adjusted them like the National Bank did, they didn't. But in general, Non-seasonally adjusted prices have gone up in March, but when you're looking at price points or price ranges, people are buying homes at a lot lower price ranges. And even on the low end here, you can see the $200,000 to $400,000, those smaller price points, they've almost doubled the sales. So there's more homes and condos and whatnot available at the lower price points than there was last year. So anyway, I stick to what I said, prices or price points, I should have clarified, but I think I did say price points in my video are shifting lower. The next chart I'm going to show you, I want to kind of just give you a background. So we're, we're dealing with average prices, right? Which is which is the mean, the mean prices. In the US, they use median prices, but I like to, you know, the, the data in Canada, except for Quebec, but you can still pull the average of the mean prices. The average prices in Canada are what's generally used, but we do have access on my board to the median prices. Last month, I saw this thing that I thought was very strange. And I saw the median price went down and the average price was going up. And I just, whatever, it's a monthly thing or it happens. Then I charted them together here in this chart. And you can see they follow each other very closely. There's not too much divergence or diversion from each other until you get to March this year, which I've circled here. So then I asked myself, like, what does this mean? Does this mean something? And you can get into all sorts of, you know, statistical tools and MACDs and things like that, which really doesn't apply to real estate. But there is statistical indicators that people use when you have a divergence and it's outside of a normal range that it, it could mean something. And usually it's a sell signal or a buy signal. So, of course, I charted the percent changes or the difference between the median and the mean prices, the divergence. And you can see like March here was way below. It was like 3.4 or 3.6% difference between the increase in median compared to the increase month over month in the mean. Usually it's within that plus two to minus two range. It shows that we're going through these extremes and it's not a very stable market. So we've seen these monthly or these spring increases, but it shows me that they're not normal and they're outside of the normal range. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on that. And um, yeah, very interesting stuff. So before I go, I want to leave you with a quote from Franklin D. Roosevelt. I use this on the inside of my presentation folders when I do like, listing appointments and whatnot. It's been there for years, but I think it's very applicable to today. So here it is. Real estate cannot be lost or stolen, nor can it be carried away. Purchase with common sense 
paid for in full and managed with reasonable care, it's about the safest investment in the world. So I guess I kind of wanted to bring that quote up today just because it kind of ties into my videos, right? Purchase with common sense as opposed to FOMO or fear of missing out and paid for in full. Okay, not too many people can pay for their house in full, but not over leveraged on 35 and 40 year amortizations that the bank kicks the can down the road with. But anyway, I think it's very applicable to today. Again, real estate is a great investment, but when you enter it in a common sense agreement, and of course you you don't do it for the wrong reasons. That's all for this week. And until next week, I'll see you then.